Hey guys, I'm going to show you some quick tips on pivot tables in Excel. This is Excel 2007, um, you know, not the newest version, uh, but I know a lot of people still use 2007 in the workplace, so or just have it on their computer. So this is just some tips on that. Um, I believe a lot of the information can transfer over into 2010 as well. So I'm just going to get started here. So I'm going to show you how to create a pivot table. Uh, this is just some dummy data I have here, uh, and the way you create a pivot table is go to Insert uh, Pivot Table. It would auto -select, automatically select it out for you. Uh, you have to make sure that your all your columns have uh, some header, uh, otherwise it won't create it. You'll get an error. So just click OK. It's in a new sheet. So some of the cool things you can do uh, if you know how to use a pivot table, you you know your row labels and your columns. Um, if you add anything into these, either of these, you get a unique set of information. So in here, if you look back uh, in the products. You have like duplication. Uh, if you put it in either the row or the columns, um, you'll get the unique number. So if you want to get a unique count, that's one way to get a unique count of something. Um, that's not what I'm going to show you. So one thing I'm going to show you here is something that's common. You have some empty values here. These are actual zeros in the data where uh, this particular region doesn't have any information for this uh, product here. So one way to get around it, instead of manually entering the in information in after you copy the table somewhere else, is you right click on the data, go to pivot table options, and you'll get this uh, box here, this, uh, this input box. You could just put zero, or you could put any number or any text, I would, but I would recommend putting zero in there. So then you can work with the number, and it will populate uh, zeros in those spots for you. Uh, another thing you can do in this, if you use the pivot table, we probably already know this, um, but you can filter your values uh, by a top number. So if you want to filter your products just to see like the top three, you can filter that by just clicking um, values and then getting this dialog box and clicking OK. And that'll give you your top three values or your pr products or whatever's in this row column. Uh, another cool feature is if that you want to figure out what's the top value across within each of these regions, you can just move this into the row label and it'll give you the top three values uh, for each of those reason, regions. And you can adjust that if you want to say, see the top five, you go back to value filters top and then just change it to top five. And it will adjust based on that. You, you can see that they're not the same, but if you again want to see it across regions, then you just put it back in the regional uh, side. Uh, another interesting thing, instead of looking at the values here, you can look at percentages and their distribution. So if you right click on the data, uh, go to value field settings, and then go to show at values as. Right now it's normal, and you can show it as percentage of a uh, number of things, row totals. Um, I'm gonna show you the row and column, so you can do the percentage of the row and click OK and that shows you this product across your columns so and it, as a percent so if you're looking to show something across you want rows if you're looking to show something within um, so the distribution or percentage within um, you do a column column so if I wanted to see the distribution of this uh, pro these products within East, within this particular region. Um, you can just right click, go to value, field setting again, show as, and then show as column. And then these should add up to 100% for each particular uh, column that you have. So that is showing the value as something other than the normal value and showing as a percentage so you can get the distribution. Uh, you could also do, and this is something really cool um, and not a lot of people know about it, is uh, percent change. So percent change isn't usually the formula, the new over the old or minus the old divided by the old. Um, you could take, the way you can do that in a pivot table is take the value again that you want to do and you could show it in two ways. So right now I'm just going to keep this normal value here and then I'll show this one uh, with the dates, actually. So dates, well, I, okay, let's go back. Before I do that, I'm gonna show you how to group dates. So in with dates, you can actually group the information. Um, 
So right now I have just a bunch of dates. If I want to get like quarterly data or yearly data without having to change the uh, initial data that I have, I'll just go to group or paper daily options uh, group, group selection, select these three, you get a whole bunch of options to group your data by. I usually select all three of them uh, so I can just use them. And then boom, it groups your data by year, quarters, and month. Uh, so if you want your yearly data, you can just take out the date and year. And it keeps them as fields here. So if you want to add in your quarterly data back, you can get your quarterly data. I'm just going to use the date to get the months. Okay, so now I'll show you um, how to do percent change. So you can do percent change by uh, going to fields, value settings, show as, and then do percentage difference of or from. And then you'll click on the date and then do previous. And that will give you the percent change. Now you probably want to see the values in there as well and what you can do there is by you could just take the value again and put it in the list and that way you'll see both the raw value plus the percent change at the same time which is pretty interesting and saves you a bunch of time doing calculations and you can get it across your across your variables here and if you're if you don't want to see these two uh, funky names you can just right click field value settings and then change the name up here in the custom name to be something like total total uh, sales or something. Um, you could also just change it inside by just clicking uh, into the formula bar and doing like something like this percent change, and it changes this across them. You could also see that when you do percent change this way, you get the total percent change as well, and it shows you by uh, the year per each year across your across your months so that is grouping we did percent distributions percent change uh, replacing zeros and one last thing I'm going to show you really quickly is uh, so we already grouped dates but you can also group other things like right here I have a the number of sales and you can also group these into bins so you can see a distribution like a histogram or something like that so if you click on the same thing if you're in pivot table options uh, group selection it'll give you this box here to group things so you can just group in chunks say like I'm gonna group in chunks of 50 and wow it'll group your data in this uh, nice set here uh, in these nice bins so you can see the distribution and if you're in a pivot table in pivot table options you can click on the pivot table chart and that will let you you can just pick uh, the column chart and that way you can see your distribution um, per each region and you can change that up so, so it could just show it in a little better light so you can see per each region uh, your distribution and then uh, how it looks so for a pivot table chart whatever's in this row column row, row labels area will be um, on the x-axis and whatever is up here in the columns will be in your legend uh, what's going to be on the y-axis charted so that's pretty much it guys I think that was about like five or six tips pretty quickly um, let me know if that helps leave a comment below subscribe and if you want to see more videos like this please let me know and I'll try to do them all right thanks